and uh, we continue our lecture with infections uh, affecting a female reproductive tract. Uh, the first uh, bacterium that we're going to talk about is Gardenella vaginalis. It causes vaginitis in uh, females. As you see, it is gram-negative bacillus. And Gardenella vag vaginalis uh, can be present in vaginal secretions of up to 40% of sexually active women. Uh, a lot of those cases are asymptomatic. Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, those infections are not treated. But if infection uh, produces symptoms, uh, the main symptom uh, will be a fishy, uh, foul smell and discharge and also vaginal uh, irritation. Uh, this infection is uh, very easy to diagnose. If you take that discharge uh, and place it uh, on the surface of the uh, slide and look at it, you will be able to see what we call a clue cells. Uh, what are those clue cells? Uh, that is an epithelial cell that is surrounded by Gardenella vaginalis. And there are no other organisms will be found in that area, including Lactobacillus species. That explains why uh, those patients uh, develop uh, this very specific uh, symptom, fishy smell and discharge. Uh, they develop it because a Gardenella vaginalis uh, kills Lactobacillus species in the vagina and by doing it, uh, it increases pH environment in vagina. Uh, for the treatment, uh, we're going to use, uh, for example, metronidazole. Uh, the next infection is what we call toxic shock syndrome. We started having this problem after uh, women started using uh, tampons. Uh, this infection is caused by Staphylococcus aureus and uh, the causative agent of this infection will be toxin that is produced by Staphylococcus aureus. So why certain females develop uh, this problem? Uh, the tampon uh, is supposed to be replaced every three, maximum four hours. If uh, you leave tampon in the vaginal area for more than those uh, three, four hours, then Staphylococcus aureus, if it gets in that area, will start actively growing and multiplying. It starts producing toxin. As a result, patients develop symptoms of toxic shock syndrome. What are those symptoms? Extremely high fever. Muscle uh, aches, headaches, symptoms of intoxication. Diffuse rash on the skin and mucous membranes. The skin and mucous membranes of those patients will become bright red. We call it boiled lobster skin or boiled lobster mucous membranes. Also, patients will develop abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, which are symptoms of intoxication. Uh, liver can be enlarged and damaged. Uh, because uh, the uh, toxin that produced by Staphylococcus aureus uh, can affect central nervous system, those patients become confused. Uh, the blood pressure eventually will go down, and patients get in a shock, and uh, it can be a life-threatening, deadly infection. For the treatment, we're going to use antibiotics. Next one is pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID. Uh, this infection uh, usually affects uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. And usually that infection comes from vaginal area. Of course, uh, the, uh, the complication, the main complication that those patients uh, will develop will be infertility, ectopic pregnancy. Sometimes it can cause a spontaneous abortion. Symptoms of PID. Uh, fever, abdominal pain. Uh, dysuria, vaginal bleedings. Uh, as you see, the most common uh, causes of PIDs will be infections that are caused by chlamydia trachomatis, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Mycoplasma hominis. So basically, we can say that uh, pelvic inflammatory disease it is actually secondary infection uh, or complication of uh, sexual transmitted diseases. 
Also, uh, contraceptive intrauterine devices uh, might uh, cause symptoms of uh, pelvic inflammatory disease. Treatment. Uh, to treat this uh, problem, uh, we have at first to remove the uh, cause of problem. So if patient has STD, we have to treat that infection. Or if uh, symptoms are caused by intrauterine devices, then we have to remove that device and then treat uh, PID. Uh, we continue with the fungal. Uh, infections of a female reproductive tract. And we get back to Candida albicans, which is a fungus, uh, yeast. It is uh, dimorphic. It is uh, reproduces by budding. And uh, it can cause uh, infection uh, of reproductive tract of females. Uh, it causes uh, candidiasis. Uh, what patients are usually prone to this infection? Uh, pregnant women on the first trimester of pregnancy, patients with diabetes, uh, patients that go through the treatment of, uh, with a broad spectrum antibiotics, and the last group, those are immunocompromised patients. Uh, the main symptoms, uh, specific symptoms of uh, uh, candidiasis caused by candida albicans will be itching, uh, vaginal itching, and uh, very specific discharge. Uh, those patients actually produce a uh, discharge that is uh, looking like uh, cottage cheese. For the treatment, we're going to use antifungal drugs, for example, nystatin. And uh, the last infection that uh, we're going to talk about uh, that affects a female reproductive tract is a protozoal infection uh, uh, caused by Trichomonas vaginalis. As you see, uh, this is one of those sexually transmitted infections uh, caused by uh, Trichomonas vaginalis, which is a flagellate protozoal. A lot of patients uh, do not develop symptoms of this infection, uh, so in t uh, like 25% of infected uh, uh, females are actually asymptomatic, uh, do not produce any symptoms. But if uh, females uh, develop symptoms, uh, that is going to be uh, painful urination, irritation, and uh, frothy vaginal discharge. A uh, long time ago, we believed that uh, Trichomonas vaginalis uh, uh, could be a part of normal biota in vaginal females. Uh, today, we know that it is actually 100% uh, pathogen. Infection is very easy to diagnose. If you take that uh, frothy uh, vaginal discharge, uh, place it on a slide and um, add a couple drops of saline and then look at that slide under microscope, you will be able to see uh, jerky movements of this protozoal on the surface of this slide. For the treatment, we use antiprotozole drugs, for example, metronidazole. And the last part of our lecture uh, is um, what we call infections of uh, newborns. That means we're going to talk about infections that affect uh, newborn children. We start with listeriosis, it caused by Listeria monocytogenes, which is a gram-positive bacillus, and also it is an opportunist. It means it affects immunocompromised patients, and also it can affect uh, uh, newborn children. The reason why it's so serious for newborns because uh, this uh, bacterium can actually infect placenta or uh, children uh, might uh, be actually infected during their birth. Uh, in uh, newborn children, this infection goes systemic and can cause uh, life-threatening complications. Uh, it can cause meningitis, uh, sepsis, and endocarditis. For the treatment, we're going to use antibiotics. Next bacterium is a Streptococcus agalactii. It is a uh, gram-positive caucusing chains. Uh, it produces beta hemolysis on the blood agar plate, and it is below. It, be, it belongs to group B of Streptococcus species. Some women, up to 20% of population, uh, might have Streptococcus agalactii as a part of normal biota in the vagina. And for them, this bacterium doesn't cause any problems. 
but it can be very serious a pathogen for newborn children because when they go through the birth canal actually they can get infected and then develop symptoms of pneumonia meningitis and sepsis which are life-threatening conditions that's why each pregnant woman uh, in the United States uh, get checked on the presence of Streptococcus agalacti in vagina. If this uh, bacterium is found, then this uh, pregnant woman will go through the antibacterial treatment and then she'll be checked again. If bacterium is found again, then uh, the physicians usually consider, uh, consider a C-section for those uh, women. And uh, the last infection we're going to talk about on this lecture that affects uh, newborn children, uh, it's a viral infection uh, caused by cytomegalovirus. Cytomegalovirus belongs to herpes virus family. And uh, about 75% of people show evidence that they've been infected with this virus previously. Uh, infection is transmitted through the sexual contact and also uh, through the mucous membranes, uh, through, for example, saliva or infected blood. For healthy individuals, uh, this infection doesn't uh, cause any problems and a lot of uh, cases are asymptomatic when patients even don't develop symptoms uh, or patients might develop um, mononucleosis-like uh, sickness. But there are certain group, uh, groups of patients that uh, we actually have to worry about when we talk about a cytomegalovirus. Of course, those are immunocompromised patients, uh, group number one, and then, of course, uh, newborns. Uh, why is this infection so dangerous for uh, newborns? Because first of all, uh, this virus can cause spontaneous abortion, uh, stillbirth, and also it can cause severe birth defects. Uh, there is no specific treatment for this infection uh, since uh, this infection is uh, a viral infection.